Well, I'm sitting next to some dumpsters in a residential area. And the weather, the weather today is awful over here in uh, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, the roads are empty. Lots of accidents because it's, uh, it's raining and it's minus 3. Uh, 28 or 29F. Look at this. And so this is a discount muffler at 1601 Waters Avenue in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> a very rundown property with uh, cars on blocks in the front, but it looks like it was a, a old gas station. You know, like usually you see this um, a roof like that. But there's still a padlock on the door, like right there behind, right? And I called them. I called them uh, <clears throat> yesterday. I said, you know, I want to do some modifications to uh, get rid of the rattle and uh, too much drone. And the guy said, uh, yeah, we can do that. I said, what time? Do you want me to be there? And it says, uh, around 8, I mean, around 9. And I was a bit surprised that, like, 9 o'clock, like, normally, you know, these shops, you know, open, I don't know, 7, 7.30, right? <laughs> and it's 9.13, and they're still closed. Oh yeah, and before I left my hotel, uh, I went to get some hot water for my tea and uh, all of a sudden I see some storm warning, you know, things on the TV. And people were talking about like it's a, like a nuclear war just happened, you know. And the guy's reporting from the street, well, there's hardly any pedestrians, but I just saw a... Uh, uh, a woman with a stroller, uh, not sure if she had a baby or an animal in there, but I hope they're staying warm. Uh, and I'm like, what? The? <laughs> That's literally what the guy said. He was not sure if the stroller had an animal or a baby inside, but he was concerned for their safety. <laughs> and he looked so grim, and I'm like, where is this happening? But I had to go, and then I start driving, and the highway is like, empty there's police cars everywhere there's the opposite uh the opposite i had to go north on 95 to get here the opposite lanes were closed there's like flashing lights you know people are driving 40 miles an hour on the freeway <laughs> i just can't seem to escape this winter you know like i'm so far i i'm only 300 miles or 500 kilometers to my uh, destination in Orlando and still you know it's not it's not uh, a good weather uh, got the message since I'm waiting I want to update you guys on something related to tracking here right okay it's too bad I cannot put my uh... oh hold on I have this thing over here. I got this. And I know I have a bracket somewhere there. Let's see. It's my camera. Yeah, here we go. I knew it. See this? That's what I use for uh, to mount the cell phone on the tripod. It has this connector over here. Comes in very handy when you need a steady, you know, image. And this costs like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. You can probably get it for $1 on Amazon. Oh, this is better. Except, why there's so much noise? Like, I can't even see on the screen. I can see on the screen. 
Okay, this this guy is not designed for for. Okay, where's my camera? I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, okay. Bottom left. All right. So now I just put it on top of the steering wheel. Anyway, got a couple of interesting messages. One message was from uh, Western Star. And that guy is just, you know, they're, they're doing so bad, you know, Western Stars. And I love that truck. I asked the guy when he, um, I contacted him at the end of the year, right, when I was still looking at uh, Western Star Freightliner in Kenworth. I remember this guy from Air, Ontario, a Western Star dealer. And I said, uh, can you revive that spec, you know, with a setback axle, but uh, classic front, like classic radiator. And it's like a very unusual truck, like you, you hardly see them. I love that, you know, look of the truck. But the problem was that uh, he told me the build was three months, right? And so now he sends me the message after I bought the Kenworth and just just now today and he says hey Sergey just wanted to let you know that because uh, Canadian dollar become became stronger our price went down for this truck with four axles he says now it's only 225,000 Canadian including warranty and I sent him a reply I said I'm sorry I couldn't wait three months I need to get a truck ASAP and uh, I said I looked at Freightliner, but uh, uh, Kenworth, Kenworth gave me uh, the best build time. I should get this truck in the middle of uh, in the middle of uh, February, right? And then I got another message. While I'm still waiting here, I got an updated buyout for the trailer. I emailed the girl at my leasing company. I think end of December, it was like last day of December, but they were still on vacation and they just came back to work. Today's what, January 3rd? Yeah, and she just sent me the updated uh, buyouts, like how much money I can sell the trailer for if I don't make any money. Like, I still owe too much for the flip axle, but the trailer came came down to 73,000 Canadian plus tax you know which is uh, what almost twenty thousand dollars less than the one I paid for this trailer <clears throat> in the way in 27 no wait in 2017 or 2016 I think it was 2016 right so back then it was 92,000 Canadian so now I owe 73,000 and also in December, I talked to a guy uh, that sells uh, Talbert, Talbert Low Boys, and it's an old brand, right? But they're not very popular. I don't know why these guys uh, invested in these trailers, and they have trailers sitting right in, uh, you know, in my area over there. Like trailers are sitting on the ground, and I look at the specs, and the specs look pretty good. Like it's a flat deck. Uh, low boy and I think the loaded deck height was shown as like 18 inches and it's a flat deck and it has a very long gooseneck and that's what I want for uh, because my new truck will have a longer wheelbase than my Mac before so I need a long gooseneck so I can move the fifth wheel right and the price was you know I don't know 86,000 Canadian you know and I'm trying to talk him into, you know, doing a trade-in on this Fontaine. It's a great trailer, don't get me wrong, it's a great for big machines, you know. But I'm just looking at all the options here, because this new truck is going to be more money every month. And so I'm looking at ways to increase my, uh, my revenue. And speaking about revenue, so two things I'm going to change when the new truck arrives. I'm gonna sign up for, <clears throat> I'm gonna become registered in Quebec, you know, another Canadian province to the east of Ontario. So I can do, right now I'm only registered for Ontario in Canada, right? And those loads are not that numerous, so now I'm gonna increase my exposure uh, so I can get more ship, more shipments.
So I'll be able, because I'm Canadian, I'll be able to do loads between Ontario and Quebec and and between US and Ontario, US and Quebec, right? And especially since this new truck will have a self-steer uh, pusher axle, that's what Quebec likes. And the controls must be outside. And uh, and what else? Oh, and the th second thing I want to do is uh, I need to sign up for that overpriced uh, DAT load board in Canada. Uh, because the, the one I have now only has uh, American shippers and American brokers. I need more brokers, you know. It's too expensive. It's like freaking 270 bucks Canadian a month, you know. But... And it's a one-year contract. You cannot sign up for like three months, six months. And so I want to sign up for one year. And hopefully in one year, I will have enough contacts in the brokerage community, so to speak, that I can cancel and uh, just keep using the you know the brokers I, 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 I met during that year. And uh, so, yeah, my mind is at work, you know, because I know it's the truck is much more expensive right so don't guys think that i'm just sitting here you know staring in the blue sky i'm a bit concerned and that's why i'm trying to cut my costs and increase my profits and so like i said another province quebec um, another much bigger load board uh, which has much more canadian loads and I'm, I'm in canada so i need that and then this truck will have a self-steer axle so i can go to quebec and ideally i would want to change the trailer to a flat deck trailer because i'm still pretty upset about that wasted two weeks right in december where normally december is my best month but here uh, i made okay on the way to texas but then on the way back because i wanted to get that load from virginia i i went empty right like what 1800 miles and I couldn't do it because of my trailer, you know. And as of the end of December, that load was still sitting there. Nobody could do it because it's 80,000 pounds and the clearance is only 8 inches, you know, that big machine. And I'm like sitting there. If I had this Talbert, the guy that I'm talking to, you know, 86 grand, I would just, I would not even hesitate. I would give him my Fontaine, grab the Talbert and go pick up that thing, you know. But I don't know, like flip axle is still owe too much money, I cannot get rid of it. And ideally, like in an ideal world, I would want to keep the Fontaine brand, you know, and let's say, oh, I also emailed the uh, uh, Fontaine dealer who helped me get this uh, trailer. And I said, here's my new buyout, can we do a trade in? I give you my drop side rail and you give me the same 55 ton, but flat deck. And that trailer must have the connectors in the back for the flip axle. And this way, I keep the flip axle just in case. And I just get a flat deck trailer. You know? But if this does not work, it's fine. I'll just have to specialize, kind of like specialize in big machines. Because one big advantage of this trailer is that it's perfect for big machinery. You know, something that's tall, you know. Uh, because other guys... Uh, other guys would not be able to do it, but the, just that often there's a problem with the clearance of a, of a load. Like as an example, there was another load I was looking at uh, in December. It was a vacuum truck. Vacuum truck, you know, like a Mack truck with the vacuum system. Kind of like what they use in, I don't know, to dispose of waste. or the, I think they use them in oil fields. But it's like a regular Mack truck, like what I used to have, but it's a very long, like a, you know, like a 10 ton truck, right? And the clearance was like 9 inches or 10 or something. I need, 10 is my top of my D-rings on the, on the middle rub rails, right? So I need like at least 11, you know, so I couldn't do it. And this was also paid uh, good money, you know? So just... It's a really, it's a, it's a construction trailer, you know, it's a trailer for a construction company that has big machinery and just needs to move their own machines. 
uh, just a bit too specialized, you know. But on the other hand, if I cannot sell it, I'll just pretty much console myself with the fact that I am, uh, I can do loads that other other people cannot do, you know, because because my my height is much lower and it's a very strong trailer. I can take 55 tons in 12 feet of space, you know. I can do really big and you know heavy stuff with this so so I would actually feel sorry to see it go but you know the reality when you are one man trucking company with one truck one trailer you cannot be too specialized you know because my trailer is already specialized right like low boy I cannot do uh, you know a lot of flatbed or step deck loads right and those are most numerous but RGN loads pay pay better but you don't want to lose uh, you don't want to specialize yourself too narrow so anyway so that was an update from from Savannah Georgia and I'm still waiting here still no sight of uh, my muffler mechanic maybe they live somewhere far away I don't know but this is a weird location for a muffler shop, you know, there's just residential, pure residential area. And but it was getting great reviews and that's why I'm here. But unfortunately I don't know. I'll probably wait another half an hour. If nothing happens, I'll have to go back to my uh, hotel. And then I'm gonna leave uh, early tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow is January 4th, right? My check-in time at the hotel in Orlando. So I need to do 500 kilometers, 300 miles uh, tomorrow. So I want to wake up at like 5 o'clock, you know. I just hope the weather will be good. But I really wanted to clean up the exhaust before this last leg of the trip. Because, yeah, it does, especially after these two shop experiences with the... Uh, with, uh, with the you know differential work the the way they put it in i think they tilted it a little bit because that's the right side there is a um, enough clearance but on the left side it was touching right and that's it just occurred to me so they you know when they put the pipe in you can turn it a little bit right and it just doesn't sound right anyway uh thanks for watching i'll keep you guys posted once i'm uh once I'm in uh, Florida or maybe if I see something interesting on the way back to my hotel because the roads were brutal, you know. Well, it looks like the weather is getting worse, not better. Uh, the temperature is the same, but now the rain is turning into snow. And I'm still here waiting <laughs> at the muffler shop. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know us truckers. You know, truckers are very patient. So I've been here since 8:30. So I've been waiting three hours. Just went across the street. That guy opened like a tan, like a small coffee shop. I went inside. I said, uh, because. He, the sign in the the handwritten sign in the window says deli coffee chocolates subs and i went in i i have my cup right and i have my tea very handy you know i love doing this like so much easier to uh, get by and this is jasmine with green tea very nice tea very expensive and most of places, you know, you get, if you have a cup, that's what I learned as a trucker, right? If you have a, your own cup, they don't charge you for hot water. And so I go inside that place to use a bathroom and ask him for hot water. The guy, I say, do you have hot water? The guy says, some Indian old guy, he says, uh, well, I, I'm not sure, check the tap if it flows. The tap, I said, 
and I'm showing him this, right? And I'm asking him, do you have hot water? And the guy says, check the tap. I'm like, why would I want a hot tap water? You know? What am I, trying to melt ice on the sidewalk, you know? I said, I need boiled water, like, for tea. No, we don't have it. And I look around, it's a very shabby, you know, old place. Very run down, probably as, as bad as this. <laughs> Muffler shop. And so, yeah, the guy has no water. Well, he has tap water, but I'm not going to use that because I'll get sick, right? I'm not going to use that for tea. Because I know that hot water from the tap, not boiled, it tastes awful. And the only reason I'm still here, and you see, now it's, I basically, before it, the windshield was cleaner because I just moved the wipers. And in 30 seconds, it's, it's back here. Okay. Like this stupid weather keeps following me from Canada, you know. And maybe I'm the problem here. You know? And poor Georgia people don't even realize it that all this is happening because Captain Sergey decided to uh, <laughs> decided to warm, warm up his bones and come south for <laughs> for a holiday. No, but what's funny, and it is funny, that if you watched any of my, like, if somebody uh, has been watching me for a long time, you will remember that about four years ago, or three years ago, when I had a um, Chevy Cobalt, I had a Chevy Cobalt two-door, you know, sporty car, but compared to this Mustang, it was like a Lada, you know, in a rundown condition with the engine there was no torque but anyway so i took I, I got into that car it was january i remember exactly because it was always my dream to get away from canada in january uh, because actually february is going to be worse but i cannot afford you know to be uh, when i was when i had my own truck right i cannot afford to be along for so long so i just took off like two weeks in january and i i booked a hotel it was a micro what is it called micro hotel micro hotel uh, in jacksonville somebody told me don't go south there's like too much crime in there you know too many bombs and and so i stayed in jacksonville uh, all the time pretty much like two weeks and all I did was the same stuff I do at home I just go to Starbucks in the morning play with my computer then go to <laughs> to a restaurant once one time I went to the ocean I don't know what kind of vacation was there but it was cold you know my first day uh, the first day I, I I come to my hotel to check in and there was a small fountain in front of the hotel and it looked pretty much exactly like this you know? the whole hotel the whole uh, fountain was frozen you know just because i decided to come to canon i mean the, to florida well i see some guy walking over there no that cannot be the mechanic Some black dude is walking, and he he wears uh, coveralls. Well, I was just thinking that you know maybe they'll show up around twelve o'clock. You know, like I have nothing else to do, and tomorrow is going to be a very fast kind of like driving five-hour trip to. Uh... Oh yeah, I hear the rumble. This guy was here before. I saw he stopped. He has a door jam truck. <clears throat> I, I saw him stop over there and then he looked back and he saw the padlock on the front door and he drove back it's the same guy and no but actually one more reason is that why I'm still here which is of course kind of ridiculous but the weather's so bad and I, I checked uh, I checked the you know the weather the news 
And most importantly, what I love about this Google Maps, once again, is that it shows you real uh, time conditions of the road. And as I was driving here, I saw cops blocking the road on the opposite side. So I knew that I cannot take the same road back to my hotel. And my hotel is about 20 miles away from here, like 30 kilometers. And that's a pretty long trip, you know, in a bad weather like this. And when I'm looking at Google Maps and I put my hotel in there, I see a red everywhere, you know, like stop traffic. And then I see a circle with a little brick in the middle, right? No entry, like the sign. Road closed, road closed. But Google Maps, of course, can find a way around. But it says the delay, like the last uh, part of this little trip to my hotel, I have to be on I-95. And it looks like as soon as you go on I-95, it's like it was 40 minute delay. You know, and I figured might as well wait here, you know, because I think the, the traffic should clear up a little bit. Uh, you know, because they keep plowing the roads, they keep putting salt, right? And so there's no, like, either I wait here in the com comfort of my car without stressing out with the, about other vehicles around me, you know, or I just sit in, or I sit in the traffic jam. So basically I'm stuck here, so but I'll just wait. Yeah, I'll wait maybe half an hour more. And then I'll go back to my hotel and I'm ready for some uh drive drive footage. Uh my GoPro I think it's charged. Almost. And I got my my handband ready, so we're gonna do some driving video to show you guys the the road conditions over here, so this should be interesting. But for now, I'm still here. Well, it's 12.04 on my car clock, but it's 12.09 real. And I just got an interesting message that says... Uh, I mentioned this, right? Where... The guy was, the guy has the trailer, right? And I asked him, I asked him um, if we can do a deal since the price went down for my trailer. And this guy just sent me an email. He says, uh, I talked to, uh, you know, the owner of the leasing company. And he says, um, I asked him if we can switch your trailer switch like basically i guess he's buying my trailer he's buying out like this guy he's a trailer dealer he's a salesperson for a trailer dealer so i guess he's buying out my trailer and then we're getting a new trailer but then that one is eighty-two thousand, which is still cheaper than um than what i um paid for this one but it's still a lot of money right I don't have a lot of money left because I have to plan for the truck. That's the big expenditure. So, and I don't have I don't have his phone number. I wanted to ask him how it's how the deal will go. And I'll just you know in order to survive, I have to do this because I cannot limit myself so bad. You know, like uh, I mentioned this before. If I had this trailer in US and I was an American, I would not even, you know, think about this. But because I have limited freight opportunities due to the fact that I'm in Canada and I have to go Canada to US, US to Canada, right? I cannot move loads inside US. I cannot afford to be too specialized because there's just not enough freight for me. And the sad part is that when I sold my Kaufman, I had some money, right? So I gave these guys, I think I gave them like 9,000 bucks Canadian as a down payment on this Fontaine. And, and even then the payments were pretty steep per month, right? So I don't know, this one is 82,000 Canadian. So it's basically like a new lease, but it's a flat deck trailer, like the Talbert. So I'm just not sure how what would they expect from me in terms of uh, uh, down payment? Well, maybe.
maybe a thousand bucks. I'll give him a thousand bucks. That's it. <laughs> I'll say, guys, I, I'm buying a new truck, right? So. And I hope I hoped I would fix the car, you know. No, the padlock is still there. As we say in Russian, не судьба. Не случилось. Not in the cards. Or a literal translation is не uh, судьба means it's not my fortune or my destiny today to do this. Не судьба. Oh, but you see, cars are moving. You yeah. know? Like, there's much more traffic now than before. I don't know, maybe I should wait a little bit, but... Now the roads are a little bit better. But now, you see, I'm here, over here. Uh, kind of like near the river. And I have to go this way, and it, as you can probably see, it's all yellow amber color and this 95 so my hotel is right here I'm just I put in Walmart as my destination and this 95 over here was all red and I think that's why my GPS is saying I see like these are road closures a red over here uh, but now it looks like it's better than before like because this road was closed before I think yeah, the, the GPS would not send me like this. So, I don't know. Shall I wait maybe a little bit? 12.14. Mm, because I have a feeling, you know, like as soon as I leave, they will show up. Because now I see much more people over here. See, somebody shot somebody. No, no big deal. This is Georgia. <laughs> no, this is it. I'm tired of sitting here. Try to call them. Their phone is not. 200 meters, turn left onto East Henry Street. Why so loud? You know, some places uh, they have redirection, right? Um, you know, smart people. What they do is they redirect their phone, their their office or shop phone, uh, to the, let's say to their cell phone, right? And then you can always reach them. And I called in the morning. Oh, it's a one-way street, sorry. Turn left onto East Henry Street. Mustang just can't, cannot get a break, you know. I left Canada and I'm back in winter. Why does it slip? Not too bad. Uh oh, 13 feet. Jeez. Oh, wait, I'm in a car. No big deal. But if I was in my truck, with a heavy load. I probably would be scared right now. People are walking in the street, checking their cell phone messages. Okay, 
guys don't fall asleep because this is gonna be a fun ride just wait till we reach uh, the freeway but I never drove on that 17 Martin Luther King something highway I got a turn 1.2 kilometers before light gas and shift as soon as possible that's the two tricks two major tricks when driving on slippery road like this oh, somebody's having a party rock on This is the track, right? This is where people, you can see tracks in the snow. This is where people drive, right? This guy goes on the left where it's pure snow. Like sometimes you gotta wonder, you know, how this amateur drivers, well, no offense, I'm just saying, you know, non-professional drivers, like, and by professional, I mean people that drive for a living, like, you know, taxi cab drivers, you know, delivery drivers, truck drivers, right? I think I'm probably like five times more careful than an ordinary, ordinary driver, you know? Because my first truck, I bought, it had 160. 165,000 miles and I sold it when it had what 850 so those miles were all me so I drove 700,000 700,000 miles on that truck and the Mac I did uh, 200,000 so basically both trucks plus compare my cars I think I have about 1 million mile experience driving and that of course helps that helps in a situation like this uh, where do I turn here? Or the next one. I have no idea. Turn left onto Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, then turn right onto West Anderson Street. <laughs> is it even... It, oh boy, this is not even a one-way street. But you know, it's hard to see, right? Hard to see. Take the next right onto West Anderson Street. This one, are you sure?
Mokichi Road. Turn left onto Mokichi Road. Guys, running out of gas or something? Come on, door dram. And there's a cemetery. And this guy is driving. Oh, he has his flashes on, but his front turn signal. Continue on Okichi Road for 17 kilometers. What? 17 kilometers, 11 miles? Okay. Yeah. So this one will take me straight to... Uh, straight to... Uh, Walmart. It's kind of like a shortcut. You, buy, you bypass... Uh, big highways. Make sure my doors are locked in case somebody decides to jump me over here. And I see a sign on the left that says, Welcome to Savannah. <laughs> Where was I the, all this time? And again, if I had a truck right now, I'd be... The sign says, no, no trucks in the front. No trucks. And those two kids were there. They were playing with uh, firecrackers. So 11 miles at 25 miles per hour. be cool so see that's what you get from watching captain sergey's videos it's like tom hanks said you know life is like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get so it's <laughs> the same with my channel one day you're watching semi trucks then you watch me uh, shoot photography And now you watch me drive in the snow in Savannah, Georgia. Wow. With palm trees on both sides of the road. <laughs> so I just thank you all guys for watching. I do appreciate it. But kids are, I bet kids are really enjoying this kind of weather. You know? Oh, yeah, because it's an emergency situation was declared after, like, I, I was not aware that was a, it was an emergency situation. Look at trees. It's all icy. Uh, but from what I understand from some quick cell phone research online, is that all schools today are closed here. So you're getting the, you had you're getting the first hand view of this severe weather in Savannah, Georgia. Nothing is plowed. Feels like you know, like like a war zone. Uh, hardly any people. Limited. Well, there's still a lot of cars. I see all restaurants are open. I passed the Waffle House. 
it was crammed with people inside. What's with my wipers? You know, they're making this noise. Now look at this guy. That's the type of people that, you know, like they have a 4x4 truck and they think they're invincible. The brakes don't work in a 4x4 mode, buddy. So far so good. 10 kilometers, 6 miles to my, uh, to the Walmart. I just want to go there and get some, because all I have there, where I'm staying, I have a subway subway sandwich shop and I have a waffle house and I want to get some like a salad you know I buy those uh, those like leaves you know in a in a plastic box like a spring salad and I just eat it you know I watch TV or something I play on my computer and I find it works you know you like boost your your body and one thing I noticed, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, 30, 31st, 1, 2, right, today's, oh, 3, so th today is day number 5, of, as of me not having any coffee inside this body or any alcohol. You know? And I, I feel much better, especially without the coffee. And I think my face looks a bit better. But it's easy to overdo it with the green tea as well. Because uh, one day I had, it, I had too much. And then I couldn't sleep because it, you know, it does have caffeine. Of course, it's like ten times less than coffee. But if you have like, you know, five cups after six, you're not gonna sleep. See, uh, grocery store is open, liquor, which now I don't need. This is it. I quit. I just follow in my brother's footsteps, who quit like I forget, 14 years ago. So now our family is my mom, my brother and me. We're smoke free, uh, tobacco free and we're alcohol free. Minus 3 Celsius, 28 F. But at least I think it stopped raining. So now it's just snowing. And I really, that's why I, I, I want to get back to the hotel and park because I don't want to be on the road, you know, much longer because it looks like conditions are not getting better, they're getting worse. guys for some reason I don't know maybe they were speeding a very exciting drive <laughs> I'm in gear 3 my IPM is uh, 1750 of 
course normally I don't drive at such low RPM but if I add gas my rear wheels will start spinning especially with uh, so much power six kilometers to go four miles we're getting there girls in the front driving at uh, 25 kilometers an hour which is uh, 14 miles per hour one guy is blocking the left lane with flashing lights another one is driving here <laughs> does not make any sense to me if you want to drive slow why are you in the left lane move over Now we have like a caravan over here. But anyway, that's my Walmart over here. So my. In 200 meters, turn right. My um. My hotel is just down the road. I think. Yeah. So we got a green light. Cool. Yield. Nobody to yield to. take a next right oh it's because it's the it's parking over here all right let's go here in oh. 200 meters turn left see that's what happens when you listen to a gps <laughs> basically Any more instructions? Or is that it? Why would I want to turn right? It's the Walmart over there. What's wrong with you? Now I see you. Look. Look. That's the Walmart. Stupid application. In 100 meters, turn right. <laughs> oh boy. No comments. I like how people park. No lines, right? So you can just park wherever you want. Cool. Well, you, what happens if I turn my wheel? Look. Well, no big deal. Don't try this at home. Controlled. I'll just stop somewhere here. Okay, boys and girls, this is it. I made it to Walmart. So I haven't heard anything from the guy. The guy did not call me. Let me check if I have any messages. Like the sales guy, right? with the trailer and this um, the load board the load board they're so not happy with me paying 30 bucks a month US they keep bugging me with uh, offers to go to a premium plan for hundred dollars a month because now I can check broker brokers credit and I'm using a factoring company so I can check brokers credit like this online for free oh yeah and they said uh, with 30 bucks US you have a 60 second delay basically I cannot see live loads you know if somebody posts a load 
I only see it quote unquote 60 seconds after and I'm like okay if I was a dry van or a step deck or flatbed maybe that would worry me but I do highly specialized loads I highly doubt there's like a lineup of IGN guys 55 ton trailers you know sitting just waiting to hit the button book and that 60 seconds will will you know give me anything but that's what these guys are selling you know oh you're on a 60 second so what do you mean 60 second oh you're on a 60 second delay plan uh you want to get you know proper live load board it's hundred dollars us so three times more for 60 seconds no thank you i'm okay with 60 seconds you can keep uh, your immediate plan for you know for somebody who's not as smart you know as me <laughs> So I'm just saving 70 bucks US a month. Good deal. Found the sales guy uh, cell number online. I sent you a message that said call me. Uh, yeah, can I talk to Phil? Phil? No, Phil. Phil Aitken. Yes, hang on a second. Phil Aitken. Hey, Phil, hi, it's uh, Serge. You sent me a message about uh, your trailer. Remember, I'm the guy with the Fontaine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, this number was listed as your cell number on your website. Really? Yeah, this is not... This is not your phone? No, it's one of my sales guys' phone. We haven't even had a lunch together. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's on your website. It says, use trailer, sales manager, Phil, and this is your cell number. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, anyway, I just wanted to, you said uh, you talked to the leasing company and they were, they were okay with it? Yeah. They're okay with that, so if you want to go ahead with the deal, we can do that. So how, how would it work? So you just... You just okay. you just buy out my trailer from them, and then you find a buyer yourself, and then yeah. and then we do like a new deal with this trailer. Right. Okay. But I. So 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 essentially, from from your end, uh, Ryder Leasing, all they do is they just uh, cancel your lease um, with with the Fontaine. <clears throat> you sign a new lease for the Talbert. And you turn the uh, trailer into me, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> they start charging you for the new Talbert, and away you go. Oh, okay. But we're not talking about the, the because the flip axle. The, if you saw the buyout, there was the flip axle was extra, right? Oh, well, that, that is what I was, like. Like I asked Regan, and I said um, that's. A, total payout for everything and he said yeah oh no it was like 72,800 was for the trailer and the flip was like 17,000 oh. yeah so the flip well, that's, a, that's a completely different story I can't do that so. no but check the check the email I sent you check the email I sent you this morning there was two attachments over there two PDF attachments and one okay. was one was the buyout for the trailer, and the other one the buyout for the flip axle, and that's the deal. Uh, that's the numbers I have. Okay. Let me uh, get back from uh, lunch, and I'll check that out, and I'll give you a shout later on. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Now. Bye. <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true, you know, because you see, he said he thought. For 73,000 Canadian, he was getting my trailer with the flip axle. And of course, that would not work for him because uh, I still owe a lot of money on the flip axle. Yeah, the trailer is fine. You see, I can do a deal because I gave him a big down payment, but because the flip axle, it's still like 17 grand, I think. And so it's like 73 and 17, it's like 90,000 for two. And 
you know, this guy, he's buying this trailer so he can resell it, right? And so he cannot resell it. Uh, well, that flip axle is probably worth, I don't know, maybe 10,000, you know? And so if he buys the trailer for 73, he can probably sell them for, I don't know, 90,000 together. But that's pretty much what I owe, right? So that's not, you see? He's gonna get back to me, but of course, basically, he did not. He did not read my email. I sent him both attachments, buyouts for the tra for the trailer and the flip. He didn't even look at them. He called the leasing company instead, and that guy, you know, he has thousands of leases, and so he gave him wrong information. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. We're gonna hang, leave the things hanging in the balance. You guys have to uh, keep watching to know what's. <laughs> what's gonna happen with the trailer but no way I'm giving him a, a flip axle for free because it's a lot of money so stay tuned uh, happy holidays again and I thought by now I'll be saying stay cool and stay cold because you know I'm in Florida but I have to say stay warm you know stay inside stay away from the storm